I couldn't believe my luck as I walked out of the antique shop that Saturday morning. My wife had dragged me along for the I don't know how manyth time, and this time I had almost stood up for myself and stayed home. Almost. The knickknacks of the past are the treasures of the future, is what my wife tells me, a saying she finds more clever than it really is. Although I hadn't wanted to go, the trip wound up leaning in my favor. When we left the shop, I was holding a beat-up Maybell parlor guitar from the 1930s. Whether the shop owner decided its condition didn't warrant a higher price, or he was just ignorant to the instrument's value, I didn't care to know. I didn't ask any questions and risk him recognizing his mistake. When we got home, I shut myself in my office and pulled up a stool. With some basic first aid, I managed to get the thing to hold a tune. Well, mostly anyway. One of the tuning pegs, the one connected to the B string, had a chronic tendency to roll forward as I played. This meant the string was always flat. Fortunately, I'm a decent player and saw the flat as a welcome challenge. I started finding new ways to finger my favorite chords to compensate for the flat string. I would have to bend it a little no matter where I fretted the string to reach a melodic tone, but the result was a unique dissonance that I was sure I could use in a song somewhere. There was one particular chord that just fell under my fingers when I picked up that guitar. The chord would have been A minor, but with the detuned string it ended up being some eerie variation. I mean, it had a straight up spooky sound to it that I couldn't get enough of. My wife could though, and she let me know often. A few days passed and I got more accustomed to the adjusted playing style the guitar required of me. I set up a couple microphones and laid down a demo for the first song that would feature the vintage instrument. I wrote the entire song so it would build up to that creepy A minor-ish chord. End it without resolution, make the listener hungry for more. When I listened back to my recordings, I couldn't have been happier with the warm tone that emanated from the guitar. The sound reminded me of listening to my grandfather tell stories of better times. I got lost in memories as I listened to the carefully selected chords being strummed in a hypnotic rhythm. The arrogant bliss ended when the recording neared the end where I had played that strange A minor chord. Some technical glitch must have interfered with the recording. Right when I strummed that chord, the guitar suddenly sounded like it was being played in a cavern a mile away. The prominent sound that came through my headphones was an animalistic hiss, unlike any electrical noise or radio signal I had accidentally recorded before. I was frustrated that my first take had been ruined, but thanks to today's intuitive recording tools, I was able to punch in another recording of the chord with relative ease. However, when I checked that recording, it had the same problem. I tried everything. I changed the microphone cords, restarted my computer, unplugged any unnecessary electronics in the nearby rooms, but when I recorded a third time, the chord was still masked by the aggressive hiss. By the fourth field recording, I was beginning to think the noise didn't sound electrical at all. It had a human quality to it, like someone with a deep voice whispering directly into my ear. Well into the night, I gave up recording and joined my wife in bed. Soon after I'd fallen asleep, she was shaking me awake. She said she'd heard a noise, and I judged by the look on her face, she had truly heard something that shook her. I listened for a moment, but heard nothing. I told her to wake me if she heard the noise again, and I'd take a look around the house. I'm not sure how long went by before she shook me again. This time, she nearly shoved me out of bed. I asked her what she heard that had her so scared, and she said, Your song, your song. Not the whole thing, just that one evil chord you keep playing over and over again. The chord? The way I had to strangle the neck of that guitar to play that chord made me think there was no way another song or random house settling noise could have replicated it. Not even close. I crept down the hall to my little studio and peeked in cautiously. The old guitar was leaning on its stand exactly where I left it. After a short sweep of the rest of the house, I returned to bed and fell asleep quickly. The third and last time my wife woke me was not with her touch, but her voice. She was screaming my name over and over. I opened my eyes to see I was not laying beside her, but standing over her. Stranger still, my arms were raised above my head as if I were about to swing an axe to split wood. I slowly lowered my arms and found my white knuckles wrapped around the neck of the guitar. I met my wife's wide, wet eyes and realized what she had stopped me from doing. Stopped me? It was my body that committed to the action, but the will was coming from somewhere else. 
The next morning, we were at that antique shop the moment the shop owner unlocked the doors. My wife waited in the car while I took the guitar in to beg him to take it back. The sign clearly says, all sales final, he said, with one knobby thumb pointed at the sign behind his shoulder. I realize that, sir, and I understand why you say that, but no ifs, ands, or buts. I'm sorry. Look, sir, I tried to reason with him. Don't you know my wife? She's in here all the time. Loyal customer. Couldn't you just do us this one favor? The shop owner's face changed. He didn't quite look empathetic, but he was at least concerned when he asked, Is your wife all right? Is she here? I was caught off guard and wanted to ask him if his own wife was all right. Where was she? Come to think of it, I thought I used to see her around the shop. Instead, I just told him my wife was waiting for me in the parking lot. He leaned over the counter to look out the window, then breathed a sigh of relief. What if I just left the guitar here? No money back, just call it a donation if you want, I offered. He looked down and slowly started nodding. Yep, yeah, all right, he muttered. I'll take the damn thing off your hands. Real pain to get rid of this one is. That was the end of my experience with that guitar and the strange chord it brought out of me. But my wife and I would still visit that store from time to time, at least until it was closed when the owner was arrested for the murder of his wife. Sometimes the guitar would be there, sometimes not. Each time it came back, it seemed a little more worn, a little more beat up. I wonder where it ended up.